Tom, thank you so much uh, for accepting this interview. This interview is Tom Poor. And to begin with the beginning, um, I wanted to ask you, what was your epiphany, how you came into architecture? Oh. It's the interview with Tom Poor. To begin with the beginning, I wanted to ask you if you can tell me about how you came into architecture, if there was an epiphany or if it was a gradual process. Mm -hmm. I think it was the um, the, the the commitment uh, somehow. Uh, I remember <coughs> I remember uh, the bats of Caracalla. Uh, it was it was um, it seems to have been there. It just uh, the 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 the, the, um, the presence of the thing. But, but not, it wasn't articulate in any way. But did you have inspirations, architects who somehow inspired you, or heroes? No. No, buildings. Buildings. Well, buildings rather than architects. And can you tell me about which buildings were important for you? Um, I suppose at the beginning and still, it would be more anonymous ones, ordinary ones, bits and pieces that are littered around where I grew up. <coughs> um, um, I used to enjoy a lot, I still do enjoy a lot, and then as I, as I, um, as I began to study the subject, uh, I very much enjoyed things like um, well, maybe relevant to this would be things like Tarani's Danteum. Um, which I think is still a real building. Um, uh, buildings by Leverance. Um, John Soam, the usual suspects, I think. You also mentioned in a previous interview that Shinohara was an inspiration. Yeah, he, yeah. Very, yeah, very no, that is, I, I like this, yeah. Because Shinohara got the golden line. Yeah, I think that's been great. Sejima, uh, I think Anani, so it would be great to talk about Shinohara, what inspired him. Yeah, I did. Yeah, he, yeah, he, 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 um, he, um, he, he, he made some very, 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 Beautiful things. There was, there was one period where he produced um, <clears throat> a series of these famous, ha these very well-known projects. I've never seen one, but um, I discovered him in books. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, <clears throat> I was very happy to hear that uh, he he, um, he he's he's being honoured in this way. Uh, the there is a there is a. Um, I suppose there is a surrealism or a hyperrealism in, in the in the in the in the work that um, that I enjoy, and 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 a certain quality of um, maybe uh, there is a depth in the space. There seems to be a depth in the space. I've never seen one, as I say, but. That, but and 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 the and the and the freedom of 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 of, of the strategy, um, I admire. Now the first time I had heard about your practice was in the 90s, and I think it was a project you did in Cork, um, which I heard first about, which was this visitor center of the Gunpowder Mills. It was very early on. It was a collaboration actually with an artist, with uh, Emma O'Neill. No, you, <coughs> Emma is an architect as an well. Architect. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it was after it was after college. Uh, it was a competition when it was a, a small museum, I suppose, of uh, or an interpretive centre, as they call them then, um, in a very nice uh, uh, 19th-century um, industrial landscape of uh, of um, 
of uh, meandering um, waterways and blast walls, and um, and it's a sort of a production based uh, production based uh, uh, <coughs> terrain, <coughs> and, we, and the building um, made made a made a gateway, and, and and offered an entrance and an exit, and and had to look two ways. A small a small thing, um, and. It was made in brick um, with a, a gallery and a tea room and a, a small a small audiovisual room. Um, it's closed now. Did you have any kind of inspirations from Irish architecture? Is there any sort of Irish connection? Oh yeah, is there, well, is there, I mean, where, 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 where I grew up is, is peppered with um, tower houses um, which are fascinating, uh, um, and then you know there's a the usual vernacular of hay barns and and um, um, you know houses of a middle size and um, piers and kind of very 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 uh, handmade infrastructures, uh, field patterns, but it's very difficult to. Um, The quality of those things is not of, uh, it's not about high order. Uh, it's it's more of 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 <coughs> it's more about the compromise, how the how the typology is is adjusted into a situation, and 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 I suppose the comp the compromise of its construction as well. Uh, now that's a, that's a big source of interest. Another dimension of your work is obviously urbanism and master plans. Um, in 96, you were commissioned the A30 motorway master plan, a yeah. very unusual commission. Yeah, yeah. That was, that's fun. That was, that was, that was more of a, 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 a choreographing um, <coughs> a, a, a section of, of um, edge conditions along, along, the, uh, along, uh, along, along a road. Um, so it had to operate, one, I suppose, as a Driving experience, or commuter experience, and two to pick up drop stitches of 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 earlier 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 master plans in terms of in terms of um, how people move across and through and between spaces, and it it, beca it became really um, a dew of um, small things um, that hopefully would 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 cooperate across this and would engender. Or would would benefit from repeat viewing, um, so uh, the choreographing of these things became about, in a way, um, um, manipulations of scale across time, so that one would one would that something might reoccur at a different scale, so that this kind of quality of how big is a thing is, is you know when when things are remembered, they're, maybe they're remembered. Um, Without scale, and um, we were interested in trying to uh, choreograph that in the way that, say, Hockney talked once about. Um, he used to um, he had a, a drive uh, where he lived, and he he had a tape. He he timed the drive, and then he made a tape so that if he left the house at the right time, <coughs> um, that <coughs> he would arrive at a crescendo of Wagner as the sun set with this view. And um, I, I thought that was. Uh, I, I thought that was um, something one could try. Again, that project was never completed. It's only partial, as all these grand plans seem to end.